How long have you been doing this for? Uh, 11 and a half years. So welcome to Dare to Dream. Um, you can see I've got an amazing guest today. I'll tell you a little bit about him and he'll be on. He's already on, but he'll be on with me in conversation in a little bit. And this is Debbie Dashinger. It's really a pleasure. I got to tell you, talk about trusting energy. You know, my radio station burned down uh, three weeks to a month ago during the California fires. And I really had no idea what I was going to do, but I know enough not to go here because it's rarely where the answers are. So I just sort of widened back. I actually thought I was going to take some time off. That was the idea. Take some time off. I've been doing this 11 and a half years and just see where energy takes me. But what ended up happening is with some people, it took me a year to book and I'm like, I'm not going to cancel those shows. So I just said, let's do this. Uh, let's do this in a video format and we'll keep it all uploaded to still the syndicated sites on podcast as well as YouTube. So people can also see us. And two things happened that let you know, God was a big hell. Yes. So the first thing is first day I have a conversation with somebody about to put my stuff on a platform, the business person. And they say, how are you? I tell them the story I just told you. And the guy says, great, we want to support you. We're going to be your sponsor. Okay, that works. And the second guy got a shot was when I did this and I started seeing the numbers of views. So that's even separate from the podcast site. And it's been in the thousands and the, so brand new and i'm just telling you because there may be something in your life too that could be like just here you know and when you're called to do it you know what does that take to go to there i've known for a really long time about the importance of me being on camera i know it i know it's here i know it's in my numerology my astrology whatever you look at it's in the matrix of me However, outside of my being interviewed, I haven't pursued that very much. So it took this situation, which is actually a tragedy, certainly for the uh, radio station owners, for me to have that removed and to see this tragedy actually as an opportunity. And it's just what it's become. I'm incredibly humbled by it and very grateful. And I really mostly appreciate just how easy this has been and most of all your support because i could be doing this and unless you're there to receive it then it doesn't really work does it so thank you for receiving the show and thank you for supporting the show and thank you for loving this conversation i love hearing from you guys i just want you to know feel free to keep writing your comments because it means something and we see them by the way we really do read them all so i want to tell you a little bit about my guest because you know, it's my, my dealio, first of all, to have the level of conversation, which fascinates me with people that, for me, it's a masterclass. And then to offer that to you, too. There's a lot of people you may know, may not know. Uh, either you get to know them better or you get to know them at all. And that's what this is all about. So Jerry Sargent is here. He's known as the facilitator. And he's the founder of Star Magic Healing. He's a speaker, an international best-selling author, and world-renowned for healing people by creating rapid shifts within them hmm, and tra transforming their lives on all planes, which is super exciting. And uh, we'll see if we're going to delve into healing or not, but certainly his story and all of what he offers and some of what he knows uh, that may be in another level or plane than we do. And I want to thank my sponsors from the bottom of my heart for helping point me in the right direction in my life and in this podcast. And it's Thinkific. It is a popular software platform that enables entrepreneurs to create, market, and sell and deliver their own online courses. If you're an entrepreneur like me, you know you got to do that, right? You have to have your courses someplace amazing. And you can earn online money just using their tools. It's very easy. It's drag and drop, just so you know. And you can turn your expertise into a sustainable business. It is thnk.cc slash Deb. You can actually get discounted prices through this podcast, Dare to Dream podcast only. It's an all-in-one platform. You can create, market, sell your own online courses. And again, for this priceless experience, it's thnk 
dot cc slash deb. So a little bit about me, I'm a media and visibility strategist and I help people create a really fierce and unique presence through visibility. And that means coaching to write your book, taking your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and for some people getting them scheduled on media interviews. I'm a certified coach and I help you to stop living in the shadows so you can stand out and fulfill your purpose. So a little bit more about our guest today, Jerry Sargent's ability to heal has been likened to one of the most powerful healers in history. He's facilitated the healing of broken bones, removing tumors, cysts, dissolving fibromyalgia, healing hearts, as well as healing broken relationships and supercharging businesses to achieve massive success. I know somebody out there needs a piece of each of these, so we're going to find out more about how this is done. And if you want to find out more about Jerry, I urge you to go to StarMagicHealing.com. After this interview, go to StarMagicHealing.com. Jerry, welcome to the show. Hey, Debbie. How are you? I'm doing amazing, thank you, and really excited to get to know you. So in full transparency, I, I see that you have a big presence out in the world, but I didn't know about you before, so how lucky am I to get to meet you? And I'd love you to tell all of us, what is the work that you do out in the world today? The work that I do out in the world, I mean, it covers um, a number of arenas. I mean, I literally just got back from Cambodia uh, 24 hours ago. Um, we were over there doing some humanitarian work. We were giving out water pumps to poor families, um, putting um, solar panels on roofs, uh, putting education programs in place. It was kind of like our end of year giving back, really, um, which is only, I suppose, a small amount of work um, compared to what we do the rest of the year. But we always try and give back a little bit at, the, at December time. So, you know, that's one kind of facet of what we do, contribution, giving back. Um, so we just returned from that trip. But most of the other time, um, we're traveling the world, training people to heal with um, what we call star magic, which is an extraterrestrial light frequency that I came across um, unexpectedly <laughs> uh, back in 2009. Could I interject and just ask you a question? So in my research of you, because I know where you're headed, it says that you're from Romania, or at least that's where you had an incident, but I'm hearing an English accent. So what's going on there? Where are you from? So um, I'm like a gypsy. I'm, all, I'm, I'm traveling all over the world all the time. Um, I'm, I'm from England. I was born in England. Mm. My ex-wife is Romanian. Mm. And I was actually in Romania back in 2006 when I was involved in a serious car accident. And that's kind of what woke me up and started my spiritual journey. So that's where the Romanian part of it comes from. I was actually asleep in a taxi uh, with my ex-wife, with my two children. They were two and four at the time. And I heard like a loud crash and I woke up and the car was swaying from side to side. And there was glass and there was winds flying everywhere. And I just remember thinking to myself, boy, we were in a bad accident. We're either going to hit the oncoming traffic or the car's going to flip over. And then all of a sudden we came to a stop and there was no other cars on the road. And I was thinking, this is really weird. I looked at the taxi driver. He looked petrified. I looked in the back and our daughter, Alea, she's climbing out from underneath the driver's seat. Um, Laura, my ex-wife, she had Josh, our son, in her arms. Both their mouths were full of glass. And I looked, looked in front of me and there was a big hole in the windscreen. And my head was hurt and there was blood dripping down my face, but it wasn't my blood. I wasn't, I wasn't cut or anything. So I've got out of the car and I've looked about 30 meters back up the road and there were two ladies lying on the side of the road. I looked at another hundred meters up the road and there was what looked like a dead body. And what actually happened is the taxi had hit three ladies that were crossing the road. The first one came through the windscreen, smashed me in the face, got flipped over the car, she died straight away. The second one had her ankles cut off and the third one was physically unharmed, she jumped out of the way. So I got out of the car, 
I walked up the road and there was a man that had come out from a nearby factory and he was on his mobile telephone. And, you know, I assume he'd called the emergency services. And I walked past the two ladies on the side of the road. There was nothing that I could really do. I was just fixated on what looked like a dead body. So I walked up the road, it was just getting daylight. And I got within about 10 meters of this, of this body. And I saw this lady's soul. It was just hovering above her body. And I'd never ever seen anything like it in my life. I didn't believe in spirituality, universe, God. I thought it was all just complete and utter rubbish. And then I'm stood there on this old Romanian road looking at this soul and I was shaking my head trying to get it to disappear, but it wouldn't. I wasn't seeing it with my mind's eye, I was seeing it with my physical eyes. So I got closer and closer and then the soul just kind of slowly vanished and disappeared into the ether. And I looked down at the lady's body, it was completely mangled. It was like, um, it was like someone had taken an old car to the scrap heap. Like this, this soul no longer had any use for this body, so it just disappeared, it went on its merry way. And I'm looking at the body, I look up to the heavens, and I just say, thank you. It's a bit of a strange thing to say. I didn't feel sad, I didn't feel angry. There was no emotions that you would put you in that kind of situation. I just felt very, very grateful have experienced what happens firsthand after death. And it was like the universe was smacking me around the face and saying, come on, Jerry, wake up. We're so much more than these physical bodies. We're atoms, we're molecules, we're light, we're frequency. Mm. And that is really what started my spiritual journey. After that, I just became so hungry for knowledge. I just wanted to know, and it wanted to discover, I wanted to understand. And that's kind of where it all started for me. So that's where the Romania part of it comes from. Yeah, that's profound. So it's not like you had a, a near-death experience. It sounds like you were actually, when you came to, quite lucid. But still, this transformation happened for you and with you that changed the trajectory of your life. Yeah, I think the universe knocked some sense into me. Because up until that point in my life, um, I was smuggling drugs and guns for a living. I, used to, I was a criminal, so, you know, I, I, mean, I was happy doing it. I was earning loads of money, my, you know, I was driven by my ego. All I wanted was material stuff, but in my world, uh, you know, with the knowledge that I had at the time, I was completely happy. Mm. That's so crazy. Hand. That's that's like the biggest, I love this because it's the biggest unexpected transformation, right? To go from a life of crime to a life of the light. And do you ever look back on who that being was and just shake your head and wonder like, who was that? How did that happen? You mean, how did that happen to me in terms of the being that came through the window, the lady or? No, do you ever look back at who you were when you were a criminal, uh, essentially? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it's, it's kind of surreal mm. because now I couldn't possibly imagine what it was like to be like that. Right. But there was, a, there was a, a phase, probably two, three, four years when it was very difficult because I was like in transition. It was very hard to leave that life. Mm. At the same time, it was very easy to step away from that life, but there was lots of my old friends that kept trying to pull me back. Jerry's gone crazy. You know, <laughs> you know, business opportunities to try and suck me back in for quick cash, and it was so, so tempting. So I was kind of yo-yoing backwards and forwards. Um, but I found a spiritual teacher, and when I found my first kind of spiritual teacher, um, I was doing a lot of past life regression, you're teaching me how to remote view, all of these different things. And what actually happened is I started donating money to, to, to the charitable organization in Africa. And so I was getting the money that I was using from my criminal pursuits and giving it to good causes. Hmm. And when letters were coming back and I was, I was seeing the good that I was doing with the money, I was thinking to myself, right, I can actually you know, do good with money instead of just spending it on stuff that doesn't really have any use apart from to make myself look good or feel good. So, you know, I was going on this spiritual journey. I started donating money to charity and it was both of these things together kind of sort of started to remold and recalibrate my brain and my consciousness and 
I slowly just drifted away from this old world. But now, you know, I mean, we're talking like 14, 16 years later. Now it seems like worlds and worlds apart. Like I just couldn't ever imagine doing that again. Like it was 10 lifetimes ago. So rehabilitated, that's really incredible. Yeah. And you talk about star magic, and I just love the name of that and the vibe of that. What is it exactly? How is that different? Um, how is it different from any other healing modality? It is a tough question for me to answer because I came across this when I was in New Zealand. Um, I was I, shortly after this car accident. Um, my ex-wife had a headache mm. and for some reason I thought I could take it out of her head. I don't know why I thought that, but I went over to her, she was lying down on the bed and I actually saw the head. It, it was green and I just reached into her head and I grabbed it and pulled it out and I was like, that is really strange. She just got up off the bed like she didn't have a headache, but I didn't really think too much of it. And then several months later we moved to New Zealand and um, friend of mine had a, a serious car accident and her partner phoned up and said Jerry can you help and I said well how am I going to help I'm in New Zealand and I didn't even know why she was asking but I let, laid down on the bed my intuition said go and let, lay, lie down on the bed so I laid down I got some crystals I put them on my chakras and then all of a sudden I was inside of the hospital room wow. she was in England I was in New Zealand and all of this light started pouring out of my hands so I started putting her body back together. Now the doctors had said to her, you're probably never gonna walk again. You'll be in hospital for at least a year. So I was doing what I was doing every day for a couple of weeks. And then she walked out of hospital within 12 weeks with the use of a single frame. And I was thinking to myself, did I do something? Didn't I do something? This is just my imagination playing tricks on me. But then she came out of hospital and she phoned me up and she said, Jerry, I woke up one night. I looked at the side of my bed and said, what are you doing here? saw me inside of a hospital room and I was like, that is so weird. You know, <laughs> this imagination stuff is actually real. What was going on inside of my mind was actually taking place in another reality. Awesome, oh my God. So it sounds like when you describe that, it is a combo platter of remote viewing unless somebody's with you physically. And then also, would you call that psychic surgery when you can go in and remove and mend? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've had loads of experiences where I would, you know, operations have taken place. People have been left with physical scars on their body. You know, tumors have been removed, cysts have been removed, all sorts of different things. So yeah, blood transfusions have taken place and I've been in a different town, city, country. Um, but what happens with, with my work? I take a lot of my clients to Egypt. We go underneath the pyramids. There's healing pools under there. I work with some of the, um, the, the Egyptian beings, um, some of the surgeons, ancient surgeons that work in other quantum spaces. I take my client's hologram in there and they just go to work and perform surgery. I don't actually do anything. I just watch um, and take all the credit. <laughs> but, but really, it's not me. I, I, you know, hands up, it's not me. I, I, you know, I just watch what happens. But people say, oh, I felt Jerry's hand in my stomach. But... It wasn't my hand. I, I'm just, just an observer during the process. Huh. I just kind of set it all up and, and, and just observe. Um, but the, 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 the name Star Magic actually came um, after a trip to Alpha Centauri. When, when, when I was in New Zealand, shortly after this, this um, incident where I was healing my friend, I was meditating in a guy's pyramid. He had a copper pyramid in his garden. I met this old guy um, called Michael when I went to New Zealand. He's become a very good friend. And he taught me how to meditate. I'd never meditated up until that point. I didn't even know what meditation was. And, um, you know, he used to get me in his garden every day, sit me down in this pyramid and say, you know, close your eyes, blah, blah, blah. We used to go on these journeys. And, um, yeah, one day I was meditating and I actually had my eyes open and a little space pod landed in the garden. And I've looked over to the right hand side and there was a blue being inside of this space pod. So I've walked over, I've got inside the space pod and we flew through a tunnel of light for about four seconds, maybe five seconds max. And then we popped out of the other side and we were above water. And there was sand, there was a beach. 
I got out of the space pod, I've walked up the beach and there are about 200 of these blue beings. And they cuddled me, they hugged me, and they said, welcome home. And they were speaking to me telepathically. Mm -hmm. And they were from Lyra, they were Lyran beings. They're about six and a half, seven feet tall. They had no hair, they were androgynous, they had no clothes on. They looked really like healthy, like they all had kind of six packs. They were just so, so <laughs> And um, I, I just knew lots of information. And this information was coming to me from nowhere. I, I, I knew their kind of like birth time, what kind of food they ate. Um, how long they lived for, all of this sort of stuff. And then they took me up the beach and through the trees and through this jungle. And then there was like, um, it was like a structure created by lights. It looked physical, but it wasn't physical. And they took me inside of it and there was like this really old blue being. It looked thousands and thousands of years old. It was like going to meet like a, an elder or a chief. And I knelt down on the floor and all of this light, this orange light started pouring into my crown chakra. And there was geometry, there were hieroglyphs inside of it, like all of this code. But it wasn't like the hieroglyphs or the geometry that we see in our textbooks or in Egypt, it was different. So this light was pouring into my crown and then all of a sudden it stopped. And two of these beings picked me up and they frog marched me back to this space pod. They stuck me inside, we flew back through the tunnel of light back in the garden and I went back into the pyramids and the space pod went. And about two years later, because nothing happened from this incident until two years later, and I woke up one morning and I said to my, to, to, to my missus and the kids, I said, we've got to go back to England. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know why, but we've got to go back to England. And we just actually set a health and fitness center up in New Zealand. Mm. And they said, Dad, you're crazy. You know, you've just got the business up, everything's going really well, we've just moved here. I said, I don't know why, but we have to go back. And they, they said, no, they, they, they point blank refused. But I just kept on and on and on every single day. It was just like, I just couldn't let it go. I was like a dog with a bum. And um, after a few weeks, they kind of agreed. So we put a manager in charge of our gym, we packed our bags, we flew back to England. And then, I started seeing all of this geometry in the air when we moved back to England. I started seeing fairies, angels, all of this stuff. And they told me to write a book. So I wrote a book called Into the Light, Raising the Global Vibration, which was about my, my, my life story. And as soon as I finished writing the book, they told me to meditate more. And I started meditating every morning and I was getting up and I was going to these ancient mystery schools. And I was sitting in these classrooms and there was a... Uh, uh, you mean a remotely during your meditations you were going to these mystery schools? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was, I, 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 the first meditation I went into, I, I ended up walking down this corridor, through a door, and I was in Egypt. Sat there, you know, completely out of my body in a classroom. And it wasn't just me. I was with my son, but there was loads of other human beings there as well. There was men, there was women, there was, there was young boys, young girls, all sat in this classroom at wooden desks, like you get, you know, when you were a kid at school in, in, in this reality. And there was a man stood at the front of the classroom and he was getting these scrolls out. And on these scrolls, there were codes, there were shapes, there were symbols. And it was the shape, shape, same shapes and symbols that I saw in the orange download of light on the planet. And it was the same shapes and symbols that I was seeing just in my space since I got back from New Zealand. And they were showing us how to use these symbols to heal people. So every morning at five o'clock, I'd wake up with my son, Josh. We'd go to mystery schools for about nine months, for about two hours. And they just showed us, you know, every day how to work with these symbols. And then after about nine months, people started coming into my life that needed healing, just from nowhere, friends, family, people that I didn't even know. And I thought, let me just see if this stuff works. It was working. And after a while i thought well maybe I should, I should start a business maybe i should you know see if i can make some money out of this stuff and uh so I, that, that's where star magic came from wow. you know two of the symbols that they showed us one meant um uh healing magic and there was another an, another symbol that was to do with the stars so i just thought let's call it star magic and that's where it, where, where it came, kind of came from started that three years ago and it's just kind of just taken off really really quickly 
So when you were having this experience with the six to seven foot blue beings and uh, they took you and invited you into your space and you met the elder, and when they said to you, welcome home, is it your understanding that you are actually one of them originally? However, you are here now incarnated in the human experience or are you a combo platter of both? Well, when I got there, they called me Biron, and which is really interesting because when I was born in this reality here, I was actually called Daniel, um, but I was fostered and adopted as a kid, and my, 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 my adoptive parents changed my name from Daniel to Jerry, or Jeremy, everyone calls me Jerry, and, you know, Biron's very close to Daniel, which I kind of, you know, I don't know, it feels like it's kind of like, I don't know, some kind of link there. But when I went back to, to, to this planet, when I went to Alpha Centauri, um, I felt the love that I felt when I was there. My whole body, my whole soul, my whole everything just kind of melted into frequency. And it was like I belonged there. It was like I wasn't, I wasn't going somewhere new. It was like I was returning to what was where I'd always been. And it just felt so natural. I wasn't scared. I just, I just felt just complete joy and bliss being there. And it felt like I was one of them. And since actually meeting, um, like the, the being that actually picked me up in the, in the space pod was called Derekwai. And since then I've worked with this being like, you know, weekly, sometimes daily. Like we train people in star magic there. And after about six months of starting the business, this being Derekwai came to me and he said, Jerry, um, come with me. And he took me up to this place where, um, where I live. It was a hillside. I looked out over the hill and somehow he made the whole town disappear. And he showed me the world. And spread around the world was the Christ consciousness grid. And he had all these flashing lights. And he said, these healing centers, you've got to build them. And I said, well, if I build them, who's going to run them? He said, well, you've got, to, you've got to train people. So I ran home. I designed this training program. I put it up on our website, and it filled up within a few weeks. And I thought, okay, I'm supposed to be doing this. So since then, we've trained, I don't know, maybe 800 people. That was, you know, 18 months ago. And we're actually in the process at the moment of looking for some land in Mount Shasta in California um, because we've got an investor that wants to help oh us fund our first healing center. Oh my God. Um, hmm. Yeah, we found some, we found some land, land earlier this year in Romania because we've got a TV show in Romania and um, a Star Magic TV show. Oh, so we found some land over there. We went to look at it. We were going to do the deal. And then our lawyers told us to pull out of it at the last minute. Planning. So we pulled out the deal. And then now this big investors come in and we're looking at Mount Shasta and it's looking really strong. So, yeah, it's, it's I just all just got goosebumps, by the way, because I'm sort of obsessed with Mount Shasta. I'm not sort of, I am. And I've never been. I've read the books, The Telos, and I have this enormous curiosity about those beings. And I think what I really desire is to be able to go to Mount Shasta and have an experience, like a direct experience with the tall or the little people who they say are originally from Lumeria and survived and lived under the earth. And it just so happens last night, I was at someone's birthday party and a couple who I know very well came in and we had the pleasure of spending you know, a nice chunk of time together and getting caught up. And she said, we just came back from Mount Shasta. And I was like, great, tell me about it. Like I need a visceral experience through somebody else. And so they were very, very descriptive about it. Um, really interesting. And so I also understand there's probably a lot of land to buy because a lot is shut down. Like it used to be a big resort town, they were saying, and it's changed a lot. So I'm getting the goosies because when you say that, it's like, oh my goodness, this is coming into my space so much. Just happened last night. And now here you are talking about it. It's like, go Debbie, go. And I would, I hope you will keep me in the loop when you build a retreat center there. Absolutely. 
I'm more excited, you know, we're just, I think that's the next step for us. We've trained so many people now and, you know, all, all of next year, we've got training programs all over the world lined up and, you know, we're just, we're just ready now. We've trained enough people um, that have been through our process and our program to go in and open our first one and have it fully manned. So mm. yeah, we're excited. We're pumped. We can't wait. So. Well, maybe I just gave you a confirmation too. It's yeah. really, it's a small world. Well, we're going to take a quick break. You are listening or watching Dare to Dream podcast, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. And if you would like a report on how you could get free publicity right now for yourself, listen, that's what visibility is all about, right? You are here with a message, and it's time for you to get that message out. And it's different for everybody. It may be through a book. It may be through speaking. It may be through being interviewed, writing blogs, whatever it is. Get the report that's going to teach you how to get your being, your business, or your book out there. Free publicity, how to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media. It's at my website, debbie-inger.com. It's my gift to you. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And in just a moment, I'm going to be asking Jerry some questions about love. And... Yeah, if you would like to know more about Jerry Sargent, find him at starmagichealing.com. So, Jerry, so many questions, so little time. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to start here because I researched you, and uh, you are physically jacked, right? You know what I mean by that? So you're physically really jacked, and I feel like sometimes when I saw the photos, there was um, you always looked great and you did something, something changed to create what you look like right now. I'm curious, how did you make that choice and what does it take for you on a daily basis to maintain the physicality that you've created? Yeah, I mean, for me, physical fitness is, is something, I mean, I've always been physically fit. As a kid, I played a lot of rugby. Um, I played football, I played tennis, uh, I did judo. I, I've, always, I've always kind of done sports. And even when I went off the rails when I was 14 years old, I, I became a drug addict. I still did a little bit of sports. I still went for a little run here and there. And I, I still, in the back of my mind, always had fitness there. Now, um, I mean, I, I train every day, sometimes twice a day. I mean, for me... Like what I feel we are as, as beings, are like planetary guardians, you know, we're here to protect Mother Earth. And we're here to take these high vibrational cosmic energies and ground them down into the planet to help Mother Earth with the ascension process. And to actually do that, you've got to be physically strong, you've got to be physically fit, you've got to be mentally, emotionally stable. Hmm. So, you know, I, I meet so many spiritual people and you know, they're doing good work. They're good healers, but they're, they're fat, they're overweight, they're emotionally unstable, they're taking on so much shit of other people, and they're, they're just not functioning at 100% capacity. So for me, it's about being physically strong and fit so you can actually take these high vibrational frequencies and, and, and have them run around your body, through your nervous system, 45 miles of electrical wiring, most people's nervous systems are shot to bits. I mean, when we're training people with star magic, we, 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 we train them to eat clean, to, to be physically fit, to meditate, do qigong, all of these different things, all of the facets that make them a complete human being, as well as healing, so that they can actually take the frequency and the code that's traveling through the ether and have it run throughout their whole body. You see, a lot of healing modalities train people to pump energy through their hands. We don't do that. What we do is take the code and the frequency that's everywhere, and we run it through our nervous system, which is 45 miles of electrical wiring. So we have frequency of code coming out of our elbows, out of our knees, out of our chest, out of our buttocks, out of our feet. It's just coming out everywhere. And we use this code to change people's reality. So if you haven't got a physically strong and fit body you're not going to be able to you know hold these frequencies um in, in a good enough fashion to be able to heal 
Oh gosh, I really appreciate that. I've never heard that point of view. I'm fully aligned with you. Everything you said about the people who do such good work but are in physically poor health, not taking care of themselves and taking in, ingesting too much energy that doesn't belong to them and does belong to other people they're helping. And I've never heard anybody say, Basically, we're here to do a lot of good. We're the light workers, but in order to do that, we need to create the body that can sustain the work we're here to do. And that just gives it a whole nother sort of vibration that it, it seems easier to commit. Like it's not about willpower. It's not about discipline. It's like being fully aligned with why your soul is here. That's profound. Absolutely. For me, start matching with the lifestyle. It's not just a healing modality. So if you're not physically strong, mentally able, you know, in a good space, then you, you shouldn't be doing this work. You're better off going and doing, I don't know, being a mechanic or going and doing another job um, that, that best suits, you know, what it is that you're, you're you know, you're, you're able to do because to, 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 to do what we do, it's like, it's like being a military soldier. You know, you're, you're completely fully and ready to be on the front line. You're ready for anything that comes your way. You know, I don't drink, I don't take drugs, I just eat clean. You know, I, I'm completely dedicated to this mission. Hmm. And I absolutely love it. I don't see it as work, I just see it as pure pleasure because I'm helping so many people at the same time and I just feel so good. That's awesome. And, you know, when you describe this work and the codes and the glyphs and that you can see things uh, beyond the physical form. So I'm curious, is this all the time? Like right now, you and I are talking and we're on Zoom in different countries. Are you seeing me in a way that you can see way beyond what everybody else ostensibly is seeing in the physical form? Absolutely. I'm looking at you now and, and between it, oh, there's a laptop. I'm looking at you through a screen. And in the empty space between me and the screen, I can see geometry and code. When I look into your space, I see your physical structure. But beyond that, I just see another version of you, which is like a hologram full of geometry, full of binary information. And it's like looking into the back end of a website. So, you, you know, you're Debbie, you know, you've got blonde hair, you've got your eyes, your nose, your lips, your, your, your bodily features. But in the back end of you, you have a, a series of, 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 of code which kind of makes up the fabric of what you are underneath. So if I wanted to go in and make a website, turn it from yellow to green, I've got to change the code in the back end. Right. If I go in and help out with your right shoulder, I've got to go into the back end of your system, change the code and help your right shoulder. Or if you've got a tumor, if you've got eyesight issues, whatever it is, I've got to go in, change the code in the back end, and that changes the physical reality in the front ends. So we're not working with energy, we're working with code. Yeah. We're like hackers. <laughs> we teach people to do with star magic, and it's not actually about teaching, it's about helping people remember, because mm. we all know this stuff. At some level, this stuff is so natural to every single human being on the planet. You know, I, I say to everybody when I first meet them, if they come into our training, that I'm not here, I can't teach them anything. I can only help them remember. I can just trigger something deep and innate inside of you that you've known for eons. That's crazy. Okay, so essentially, we're like computers, right? I'm HTML, I'm binary, I've got this programming going on, whether I came in with it or I chose some of it. And so, you have the ability to see that and basically extricate the code that is not facilitating the best life or health for me or someone else. Take that out and replace it with a code that will create a different way of functioning or being that is preferred. Is that correct? Absolutely. If you look at this, it's, it's about information. Okay, light is information, like every biophoton of light can store uh, uh, you know, at least seven megabytes of information. Now, we've got trillions of biophotons of light in our system, so we've got access to infinite data. Now, this infinite data is traveling through the ether all of the time, and our 
physical bodies, our energetic bodies are designed to self-heal. And what happens is through our thoughts and emotions, we block these information streams. So what we need to do is to change the frequency of the human being to open up to new levels of information. So there's a number of different ways that we can do that. We can do that by simply going in and changing the code in the back end, or we can do it through the front end, which would be going in and changing the emotions, the subconscious mind, the thought patterns, belief systems, if you want to call them belief systems. So there's a number of different ways that you can skin the same cat. So you can go in through the front end and through the back end. Personally, it's easier to go in through the back end because you're not dealing with anyone's you know, logical mind. You can just go in, do a little bit of a you know, code change, and that just has a, 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 a profound and most of the time immediate effect on the front end of the system. What? Sometimes it can take a week or so to filter through or a few days, but most of the time it's immediate. Right. Well, the taking time to make sense if it's not immediate, because what I know from doing profound healing and altering things in my space is that sometimes it takes reality a little bit to catch up to the molecules that have just changed, you know, the entire DNA or matrix of the life I've created and in, in the way I've experienced it. So it can be rather immediate, but it, sometimes reality takes a few days to catch up with that change. And so besides the idea of healing, physical issues, are there other ways that these codes create change that people enjoy or that you offer? Absolutely. Um, you, can, you, you can create anything you want in your reality. So what we've done with Star Magic is we've created a number of different codes. So we've got codes for confidence, we've got codes for abundance, we've got codes for, for, for oneness, for unity, we've got codes for every di single different scenario. So if someone comes to me and says, Jerry, you know, I've got no confidence, I will just take the, co the code that we've created for confidence and I'll stick it into their biological computer, which is their brain, I'll download that code into their system and then boom, they become confident. Um, I mean, to give you an example, um, a friend of mine, he phoned me up um, not too long ago and he said, Jerry, my daughter um, is, 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 is just been for an interview on a cruise ship. She had her first day interview, she had to do a public presentation and it went really, really badly. She got sweaty palms, she walked off the stage, etc., etc. He said, can you help? I said, give me a number. So I phoned her up, I'm talking to her, and as I'm talking to her, I'm putting this code into the system. I didn't tell her anything. Had a chat with her for five minutes, put the phone down, I said, good luck, everything will be okay tomorrow. She went on stage and she rocked it. Hmm. And all I did is I put this code of confidence into her head, downloaded the program, and it just eradicated the old program and installed a new and empowering one. Well, we do that in all different scenarios. I mean, I was in India about two months ago, and a lady had been punched in the face like 20 years ago by her ex-husband and she had a hole in her face oh. had surgery by doctors all of this different thing but there was still a dent in her cheekbone so i got a code i put the code into her system and within a few minutes the, the hole in her face had gone the dent had gone and you know two months have gone past and she's still got no dent in her face so there's codes for all different scenarios there's codes for everything I want to experience this so bad. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like in the beyonds listening to this. I, so somebody like me or the listeners, the viewers who are like, okay, what does it take to be in? Does that necessitate working with you somehow, whether it's in Egypt or otherwise in person, or do you offer things that you don't have to physically be there? I mean, there's a number of scenarios. First of all, I've written a book on this stuff called Star Magic Heal the Universe. If you go to our website, starmagichealing.com, you go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you can buy the book. You can read the book. So many people have actually started their own healing business just by reading the book. I mean, it's got so much information in there. Um, a lot of people, they read the book and then still want to come on the trainings a bit more. Um, and we, we run these trainings all over the world. We run them in England. We run them in 
Dubai, in America, in India, in everywhere. So if, if, if you want to come to the training, the five-day trainings, go to the website. All of the dates for next year are on there. Um, our new website is launching this Friday, and we're going to have a, a beginner's online training program. So people that have never experienced star magic can go through the online training on our website. And if they like it, you know, they can, you know, then come to our physical training in person. Or that might be enough just to get them started and, and see them on their way. Hmm. Um, it, there's loads of tools on our website, so. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. So there's lots of ways, everything from the book to <clears throat> being in person. And I know that love is one of your specialties, love, romance, breakup, couples. So as far as relationships go, it is my contention that people who are experts tend to see patterns, right? I do as well in the visibility work I do. So when I work with clients, you, uh, over and over, I repeatedly see patterns that people make and choose that actually stops their success. So I want to parlay that over to you and say, what, what are the patterns that you see repeatedly, Jerry, that if people were present with or cognizant of that they could stop and instead heal and create the love the great love that they've always dreamed of having you said something when we very first started this conversation um well before we started the conversation when you were just talking to, to, to your listeners your viewers and you said something about being here or here mm. and most of the people on this planet that have got issues have issues because they're living inside of their head. The head is a dangerous place to be, as you know. <laughs> on average, you know, 70 to 80,000 thoughts subconsciously every single day. We're being controlled and manipulated by our own thoughts, by other people's thoughts, by thoughts of other beings that send frequencies into our consciousness. So we don't know whether we're coming or going. Hmm. People that live in their hearts, they're completely present, they understand their environment, they understand the connection between them and their environment, they understand the connection between their own soul and the souls that they're in relationships with, and all of that stuff just becomes fluid and easy. When people have problems in relationships, it always comes back to one thing and one thing only, if you really drill down to the core of it, and that is self-love. If you completely, wholly and understand yourself and you love yourself unconditionally, there really is no problems in relationships with anyone else. Because whatever anybody says, whatever anybody does, you're so comfortable in your own skin that you don't need to question what they do. You can just love them for who they are mm. and you can decide to stay with that person and help them through their stuff or you can decide to walk away. And whichever path you take, is completely okay with you because you love yourself and you don't need someone else to fulfill you. you know, a lot of people in relationships are in relationships because they need that other person or that other person needs them. Mm. And it's just incongruent. It's just not, a, it's not a, a beautiful match of frequencies. It's, it's head based. So, for me, when it comes to relationships, if there's problems, I ask the person to look at themselves. You know, what, why is it that you're unhappy in this relationship? And if you go down to the core of it, it's because they've got some issues within themselves that that other person is showing them that they need to look at, but they, they don't want to look at. So they blame the other person. They go into loggerheads. The relationship falls apart. They go their separate ways. But if you can get to that, that, to that couple or to the people early, and just get them to look into their own hearts, you're gonna, you can solve any relationship problem. Oh man. So yeah, it is said that the head is a bad neighborhood. So don't go in there, right? And <laughs> I, <were. laughs> I appreciate the distinction between the head thoughts and the, the wisdom from the heart. And to your point, I have a friend who's wanted a relationship for quite a while. And she actually came to hear me speak and I was doing a panel and the guy next to me was from another country, handsome dude, he was great. And they, they connected and fell in love. They've had this relationship. He just moved out here mm -hmm. to be with her and they're very serious about each other. And what's happening is she's having fights with him. 
So she's called me up for, you know, someone to lean on and she asked me for advice. And that's pretty much what I said, because when I looked into or really heard her issues with him, for instance, with money, his making or not making of it, or ex-wife, and I thought, this is shadow. I mean, you have issues with money. Why don't you put your energy in your own life and heal that? So that doesn't have to be reflected back to you, or it doesn't matter because you're, you're taken care of. So it, it's really misplaced, I think, um, anxiety and overwhelm and also not really dealing with and looking at the real problem, which is moi right here. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, r r relationships, they're beautiful because they do reflect back to us what we need to work on ourselves. But the journey of the heart is a... Is a minefield. It's a it's a, it's a tough thing for, for, for that that journey to walk. That journey takes a real brave soul, because it shows you the deepest, darkest parts of yourself that nobody really wants to look at. Everybody wants to take that stuff and and chuck it away and hand that over to someone else to deal with. But if you can stay in a relationship and walk that relationship, then you know, you are going to grow together and flourish together. I mean, I was married for 16 years and both, both my ex-wife and I were reflecting back to each other, both of our deepest stuff. We were polar opposites of each other. Hmm. I'm Pisces, she was Virgo. My biggest thing was rejection because I was fostered and adopted as a kid. Hers was a lack of self-worth. And we just kept mirroring this back to each other. And we ended up getting divorced. And I was single for two years. And I said to the universe, you know, if I... If I, if I get with another girl, it has, this, this woman has to have all of these qualities. I was so specific. And I did get a woman with all of these qualities. But she came back into my life and she started mirroring exactly what I still had to work on and where I left off from my ex-wife. <laughs> so you can't get away from this stuff. It just will keep beating on your door until you both accept that this is what you've got to work on. Yeah. So just stop wimping out of this situation just 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 get down get dirty just deal with this shit move forward work through it together and so you know if you can be in a relationship with someone that's at a level of conscious the same level of consciousness as you are be on that frequency together you can understand that this is just a beautiful experience you're not to blame each other you're to thank each other and be grateful to each other for giving each other the opportunity to actually experience this stuff in this human reality and to grow and to flourish together. Ah, so good. Well, we're coming up to our final segment, so you're gonna to wanna to stay with us. I wanna find out a little bit about the quantum energetic field and the key to the world of abundance, as well as what Jerry's up to next. A reminder, the sponsor, I would absolutely go there to check it out. It really is worth it, and they're amazing. This is where all my programs are going, and I love how it makes it look like this beautiful website, and I've kind of done very little, except it's magnificent, and it's going to be easy peasy for passive selling. So it's a short demo if you want to go there for online courses and membership platforms for entrepreneurs. Thinkific. It's online education, independent entrepreneurs and creators can use to grow their business with online courses and get your special rate through Dare to Dream only. And it's thnk.cc slash Deb. I also want to remind you to leave a five-star review for the show. Those of you who are tuning in all the time, I really appreciate when you do that. Leave a five-star review because it allows other like-minded people to find this conversation. And I think as light workers, we owe it to each other to point the way sometimes. So Jerry, I know you do teach about abundance on a quantum energetic level. And I'm curious, is there a key to the world of abundance? And if so, can you give it to us? I mean, uh, unconditional love is the key. I mean, so, so many people struggle with money. So many people struggle with businesses. They struggle with relationships. But it's not hard to get money or, you know, healthy relationships, you know, he healthy physical attributes for your body. Mm. It's not hard to get abundance flowing into your life. You've just got to get on the frequency of unconditional love. And you've just got to connect with your own self at that deepest level. You know, 
the work that we do is all about this. It's all about getting your frequency 100% tuned in to source, to the cosmic fabric, to, 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 to the start, to the center, where we actually came from, the original uh, primary light and sound fields of source energy. When you're tuned into the, the cold and the fabric of that, life just flows. It is just simple. It's not hard. I don't understand how people struggle with money. I don't understand how people struggle with anything in life because we're all just as capable and able as each other. And when you look at this on a, on a quantum level, on a level of light and information, the same information streams that are flowing into my life are flowing into your life and everybody else's life. It's just that a lot of people are just closed down to these information streams due to their thoughts, their emotions, their programming, all of this sort of stuff. Um, we've got loads of free tools on our website that people can use to tune into these frequencies and, you know, and, just, and just tap into it. Abundance flows, it's not hard. Mm. Um, so it's, it's I think your moniker stuff. should be, instead of get your freak on, it should be get your frequency on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I'm assuming when you talk about this, the love of self, the unconditional love of self opens up the flows to all that we really desire and actually is available to us, that that also has to do with us being our sovereign self. When we get out of the way and allow and receive and are in the flow of, that also brings about our well, sovereign self, like um, most authentic self, ease and being. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, being sovereign is so important because when we come into this world, you know, we're born and then we're given a birth certificate. We become property of the United Kingdom Corporation or the, you know, the, the Corporation of America. We become property of the government. You know, we go to school and we, we, we get indoctrinated to, to leave school, pay our taxes, listen to the blue sirens that come down the road, you know, be in fear of the army and the police and all of this sort of stuff and be basically in fear of life. Um, we become robotic. You know, my kids don't go to school. We homeschool our children. Um, you know, I'm not into school. I'm not into the system. For me, to be sovereign, we've got to play our own game. We've got to make up our own rules and our own regulations. Because whilst we're playing the rules and the regulations of someone else's game, you can't be a free human being. And, and again, this comes back to star magic because my mission really is to set the human race free to do what they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want, for as long as they want, and not, be, not have to go and work a nine to five, not have to go and do this, not have to go and do that. They can do whatever they want because they are free. We are free. We get to make these choices. But most of us make choices based out of fear because we, think we have to be a certain way in society to fit into the mold. But for me, I want to break free from the mold and be as completely different from the mold as I can. And, and that allows our uniqueness to shine. It makes it different. Yeah, yeah, that's fierce. I like it. What is something you do, Jerry, on a daily basis? What ritual practice do you do that keeps you really in the prime of source and receiving in a great life? Uh, you know, as soon as I get up, um, up until about midday, I just don't speak to anyone else. I don't have any communications with the outside world. I don't do anything for anyone else for the first six hours of my day. I, I focus solely on myself. I go to the gym. Um, I go for a run. I do some qigong. I do a bit of meditation. I just do things that bring me into my body and connect me to the universe and help me just raise my own vibration and then you know come midday i'll go out into the world and start doing what i need to do but up until that point i'm, I'm solely focused on myself and some people might say well that's a bit selfish for me it's not selfish it's about filling up my own teacup so i can give from my saucer i never give from my teacup i'll let my teacup overflow into my saucer and give from my saucer and i think if every human being adopted that attitude, we'd all be high vibrational beings that were just sharing bits and pieces of ourselves with each other. And we were just completely energized and full all of the time. Most people wake up and they fall into their day, they switch their phone on, an email comes through, 
a Facebook message comes through and that's it. They're, they're into the, the bullshit. You know, they're into the madness, the chaos. They've been sucked into that world through technology. You know, stay away from technology, you know, for the first few hours of your day and, and your whole life's going to change. So just on the basis of reality, I mean, that sounds really outstanding and I love that point of view. So then how do you work your day? You're alone for six hours. I don't know, unless you get up at four or 5 a.m. and do that, that's possible. But the six hours is a long time and yummy. And then how do you work? Is, do you work into the night then? How's the rest of your day structured? So I'll get up at five and then, you know, I'll go for a run. You know, it's dark, you know, I'll go for a run um, for about an hour. I'll come back and then normally what I'll do is I'll drink my own urine. That's one thing that I've, I've done for years now is drink my own urine. It's the only liquid on the planet that contains all the information on your own body. It's full of goodness. So I drink that and then I'll go to the gym um, and then I'll come back from the gym and then I don't, I tend not to eat until about 12 o'clock. So I'm, I'm fasting for 14 hours every day, you know, eight in the evening to 12 the next day, sometimes 10, depending on how the day's going, but 10 to 12 and then at 12 o'clock I'll switch the laptop on do a little bit of work for three or four hours and then close the laptop down and then that's it you know um, unless I'm running a retreat a training or a workshop I'm just only working maybe three hours a day you know I've, I've structured my business so that it works for itself hmm. you know I'm, I'm, I'm creating a meditation or a light language transmission or something for the website or I'm recording, recording a new workout video for the website for, for the people that are, you know, are our members. So I'm just doing things to add value to the website, which is already set up. I mean, go, going back a few years when I was starting Star Magic, I was working 26 hour days. <laughs> you know, I was working all the hours that God sent to get the business up <laughs> But now, now that it's, it's running, I've, I've just created it in a way that I don't need to do so much. I just, you know, I'm, I'm more focused on my kids, my girlfriend, um, my health, you know, things that I want to do that make me happy. Mm, that's really nice. So, this is Dare to Dream, Jerry. So what are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, next year, I want to, in 2019, I'm going to, buy the first parcel of land and, and, and get all of the architect's plans drawn up and hopefully in 2020, maybe 2019, start to build it. You know, that, that's, that's my next port of call, um, is build that first healing center and then once that's built, build the second one and then the third one. We, we're going to build 13 in total, um, spread in very specific locations around the, around the planet. So that is, that is my mission. You know, I, I don't really have any other dreams and goals apart from to build these healing centers. And then once they're up and running, I'm sure the next part of my journey is going to unfold. Mm -hmm. But I just want to help people become better human beings, experience their full human potential and not play small. I want everybody to shine their light in this world and just be powerful human sovereign beings. That's it. I just, I get such a buzz out of, watching people change and transform mm -hmm. but I, it, it's what i'm here to do and i'm just going to continue to do it you know i found my calling i found my passion so i haven't got like these kind of like these goals and these dreams myself you know I, there's no particular destinations that i want to holiday there's no particular material things that i want to buy i just want to build these healing centers and help more people and that is it <laughs> and I, i'm a happy man there are people who may want to meet you in person. I know you're going to be in Los Angeles soon at the Conscious Life Expo. And you're one of the featured speakers. What can people who are going to attend anticipate when they come see you? What are you going to be talking about? Well, I'm running, um, I'm running a post-event workshop for, for a day where I'm going to be teaching people some, some star magic healing techniques. If there's any healers out there or people that want to get into healing, we're running that one day workshop. I'm running two more workshops during the event, um, which are about an hour and a half to two hours long, which uh, are gonna be kind of meditation frequency workshops where I'm gonna be tuning people into a better frequency so they can experience abundance, unconditional love, 
I'll take them on some cool journeys through the cosmos. They're very powerful. If you do come to one of my workshops, even if it's for an hour and a half, make sure you're really hydrated. Um, at the last one, there was you know several people that just couldn't take the frequency and had to leave. So make sure that you just prepare yourself, get yourself mentally right, stay, get very hydrated, come into the workshop, bring your A game and, and, and be ready. Uh, I always bring my A game and I give everything to everybody. So um, yeah, just make sure you come with an open heart, an open mind and, and just be in the frequency. Um, I'm, I'm running a couple of like 30 to 40 minute talks as well, just on different things, one on money, one on something else. Great. So people who are interested can go to the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. Uh, they've got their own website. You can get tickets there. They're actually live streaming as well. It's pretty easy peasy. And Jerry, uh, I've become really fascinated all of a sudden of late with AI, right? Artificial intelligence. And I'm wondering, uh, since I'm just starting to dabble in that, do you have any consciousness about it, information, fascination around AIs? You know, there's part, there's part of me that, I mean, if you look at it, we're kind of like, our AI is already inside of us. You know, we're already programmed on some level. Um, when we look at like AI and what is happening with robotics and the technology that we're moving into the space of, it's kind of dangerous um, in, in one way because, you know, I see human beings being phased out. I mean, if you go into to the high school, in England at the moment, you go to the banks, in some banks there are, no, there are no bank tellers anymore. You walk into a bank and you put your cash into a box, you put your checks into a box, there's no one to even speak to. You go to the supermarkets, they're phasing out the checkout people and, and everything's done automatically. You know, you, you speak to, to companies on the telephones now, there's not a human being, it's just a voice, it's a robot. You know, that kind of stuff scares the shit out of me because you can see that robots are coming in and humans are being phased out. And you've got to look at this new world order stuff that certain people or certain families that control the banking system. You know, some people call them the Illuminati. I don't really want to get into all that sort of stuff. But, you know, all of that sort of stuff is there in the midst. And they are trying to create a different, different kind of life form. I mean, I, I interviewed a guy about six months ago um, who used to work in Area 51. Mm. And he told me when he was in there, they brought a woman, um, a human woman in, laid her down on a bed, and they got um, a gray extraterrestrial, and they were taking DNA from both of these beings and putting them into a metal room, and he walked a fetus um, become like it be, turn from a you know from DNA into a, a nine month old baby in the space of minutes. They put it into a tank and watched it just taking place. So they were splicing and cloning, cloning human genetics with alien or extraterrestrial genetics. And he told me all sorts of crazy stuff. So you know how it unfolds, I really don't know. What we've got to do as human beings is we've got to stay in our heart. We've got to stay on the frequency of unconditional love. We've got to unify as one tribal force, as one human family, and come together. And to kind of put up a united front and say no to a lot of this stuff that's taking place, it's happening slowly, but it's also happening kind of quickly at the same time. You know, these people that are trying to put this game into place are taking a long-term view. Whether it takes 50 years or 100 years, they're not bothered because, you know, they, just, they know the end game and they're trying to put this new world order into play. We got to say no to it. All, all of these chip and pins on the credit card, fast money, fast access, we're slowly becoming slaves in society. They're, 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 they're getting rid of cash, everything's done online, they're controlling our money, they're controlling our freedom, they're microchipping babies, all of this sort of stuff. It's scary stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jerry, I was walking, I mean, just a couple of days ago, I was taking my dog for a walk. Um, a guy I'm dating was with me. And literally, we're walking. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in a nice area. And I hear this noise. And I realize there's a drone flying above us. I could tell you it was not on a photo shoot. So I have no clue why it was there. But several times it passed by us. And 
it was really disconcerting. Like, why was that there? Why then? Why now? I had no clue. But uh, yeah, really uncomfortable to see things like that. Yeah, yeah, some crazy stuff going on, man. I mean, going back about a year ago, um, I was arrested by the police for healing people with cancer. So I went through a year court battle, all of this sort of stuff. But whilst this was going on, I, I was speaking to a friend of mine on the telephone and they sent a frequency through my earpiece into the center of my brain. And it was the most painful experience that I've ever had. And they almost deafened me in my left ear. I've, I've, not, I've not worn earpieces since, but you know, I know that you know, when you're doing really good work like this, like you've got a drone over your head watching you, um, they, 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 they tried to, to take me out in a car crash a couple of years ago. And they, they tried to deafen me on this phone call. They, they, they've done certain things. They tried to put me in prison, um, cancer stuff. And you know, they're, they're just trying to take people out that are doing good work and monitor us and all of this sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, you've just got to stay in the frequency of unconditional love. Don't let any fearful thoughts enter your head. And there's nothing they can do. All they're trying to do is just to get us to go into a low vibrational energy. And if we just maintain our high vibrational frequency, there really is nothing they can do. I'm so glad you're still with us. I really am. And that they didn't get to you. I think that's huge. And that you're able to use love to get through. I think it's important uh, that we have people like you. So thank you so much for coming on. I've just loved this conversation. It's been an absolute pleasure, Debbie. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's awesome. And I end today's show with this quote from F. Scott Fitzgerald. I hope you live a life that you are proud of. If you find that you are not, I hope you find the strength to start all over again. In the next weeks on Dare to Dream, I'm gonna be featuring Anita Morjani and Vicki Gay. These are really big conversational, com transformational conversations in the next weeks. And you're absolutely gonna to want to be tuned in. Also, by the way, it's so easy. I know a lot of people go to different sites for my shows. You can actually subscribe. It'll come right in your inbox, right? Direct link. So much easier. You can also go to YouTube for the videos, youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And again, free publicity at debbie .com. And get your online platform to sell your online programs and make massive income at thnk.cc slash Deb. The secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thanks for joining today on Dare to Dream.